So let me go ahead and do this. And uh, I've done this before, but I will do it again because of the present situation. We are children of the Most High, and we are supposed to be soldiers in the army of powers, isn't it? And so in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says, verse 3, it says, You therefore must endure hardship as a functional soldier of Yeshua HaMashiach. And no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 1, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but mighty in powers for pulling down strongholds, right? Hebrew says, holding firmly to powers to knock down fortresses that have been set up against cities, against regions, against nations and states, right? And uh, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of powers, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of the Messiah and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Right? Is that not judgment? Judging? Setting things in order? Away from that which is causing chaos? Saving those who have been afflicted from the afflictors? Yes? And, uh, and in Ephesians chapter 6, this is the passage I just want to expound on a little bit. It says, Ephesians chapter 6, I'll start at verse 10. We are familiar with this chapter, these verses. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the master and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of powers that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Greek word is uh, methodia, where we get the English word transliteration, uh, methods, so that we may be able to stand against the methods of the devil, right? The Hebrew is uh, nachal, es nun kaf lamed, which is to beguile, which is plotting harm in, in danger through veiled plots. You follow me? Deceptions. Okay, so we are to put on the whole armor of power that we may be able to stand against the beguilings or the the plottings of the devil and his methods, yeah? Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against world rulers of this darkness, the darkness of this age. Do you know we live in darkness? The only thing that's breaking up the darkness is the sun when it comes around every 24 hours. And at night, so that we're not in total darkness, the moon and the stars, they break up. We live in darkness. And only the greater light, the sun, the rule by day, and the lesser light, the moon, the rule by night, and the stars, break, is, breaks up that darkness. That's a reality that we have to accept and recognize, and then begin to question why, which will bring you back to the purpose by which you now exist, the simple purpose by which you exist, right? So he said, so we, we wrestle against principalities and powers, against powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Hebrew says, against the messengers of dysfunction. Those are the fallen messengers that fell with Satan on the day he got kicked out like lightning from heaven, from a failed coup attempt. So a third of the messengers went down with him. So they are now positioned territorially over the face of the earth. So that's who we're engaged in battle against that Second Timothy talked about, right? No one engaged in warfare concerns himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And we need to learn how to, Psalm 110 says, we are to rule in the midst of our enemies. We are to, the Hebrew word is radash, to dominate in the midst of our enemies. We are, we know Matthew 5 talks about that we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We did uploads on that previous about salt about us being light. It's our time to shine. So how can light be put out by darkness? The definition of darkness is the absence of light. <laughs> Dysfunction, stealing, killing, and destruction happens in darkness. It cannot happen in the light. We are the light of the world. So all these chaos, dysfunction, and confusion that's going on 
is a commentary on how great a light is there or not. And obviously it's not. We have individual light sources here and there, but we're spread out. We need to unite. Ephesians 5 talks about that we were in 5, 8, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are the light of the Master. And encourages us to walk as children of light. So Christians, believers, outnumber any other religious group on earth. But we are scattered from one another. And the wisdom behind scattering us upon the face of all the earth is that if we walk as children of light, we will illuminate the region where we find ourselves on the earth. And if everybody does it, I mean, you are light in this neighborhood. You are light in the neighboring neighborhood. You follow me? If everybody walk as children of light, we can light up the whole earth, given where we're at. Or regions, or territories, and states, and cities. Yeah? Because darkness cannot overtake light. But the problem is, those who claim to be sons and daughters, although, like the scripture says, we were once darkness, but Yeshua in Colossians, he transferred us out of darkness into his honorable light. Transferred us into his kingdom. Yeah? So, how can we, being the light, after being delivered from darkness, submit back to that darkness? That don't make no sense. So people are deceiving themselves, right? I'm not going for it. Bump that. This whole pandemic, scamdemic, using fear, and believers are submitting to it. And the premise is fear. And they know the scripture says, <laughs> Yahweh doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Fear involves torment. Perfect love casts out fear. Yahweh Elohim, creator of heaven and earth, is love. So if he dwells in you, guess what? Fear cannot be in the same place or space. Amen? In Proverbs 10, the fear of the wicked will come upon him. Okay? So, back to Ephesians 6, 12. I'm sorry, I'll read it again. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the world rulers of this darkness against the dysfunctional messengers. That's, those are the, all these principalities and powers are the, the fallen messengers that was cast out with Satan. A third of them, right? So they've been assigned uh, regions and countries and cities and territories to rule over and influence the populations in those regions, right? And so Yeshua tells us, we who are the Israel of powers, a nation of priests, Revelation says, and uh, First Peter, right? We are the ones that are supposed to have the wisdom to interpret what's going on and separate the clean from the unclean and those who are prepared from those who are not prepared and give instruction on the direction that we're supposed to be going in, the solution to the problem and set things in order after we've made corrections and met needs and righted the wrongs against the victims. So, verse 13. Therefore, because we know we, we are supposed to be engaged in battle, right? We know who our enemy is. We don't fight against flesh and blood. So I'm not going to get in fight in a fight with another human being. Because he's either, remember, thoughts come either from above, the kingdom of Yahweh Elohim, powers, or below, the kingdom of Satan. Yeah? So, as a son of the Most High, walking in spirit and in truth, the spirit will reveal to me the source of this individual's intent if it's dysfunctional. And so then I just acknowledge the rulership I have over the spirit that's influencing them, bind it just with my attitude. <laughs> you know, also the scripture says, uh, a king who sits on the throne of judgment scatters all evil with his eyes. The eyes are the windows of the soul. So. I've experienced that many times. And Yahweh makes your enemies to be at peace with you. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. Right? If you submit to Yahweh, he will establish your thoughts with his thoughts. So it's win-win for us if we just believe what we have read. Because it's the Spirit's responsibility, if you have the Spirit of the Most High in Yeshua, right? The anointing, right? Mashiach is the anointing. That's presence of the Spirit, enabling you to do what will magnify Yahweh, right? It's to His role as the Comforter to bring to your remembrance all things. And what does He bring to your remembrance? The promises of the Word, what it says. 
And when he brings it to your remembrance, you will speak it into that situation and you will see his kingdom established in the enemy fleet. It's that simple. The battle has already been won. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. And as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise took part in the same, as Yeshua HaMashiach, and destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and released those who through fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. It's a shame that believers are cowering behind this plan-demic, this scam-demic. I despise it. And I'm, it's righteous indignation that have rose up in me and my house. And we are praying on behalf of the body of the Messiah, asking for forgiveness for our being destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Father, please forgive us for not representing the kingdom that you have transferred us into through the, and by the blood of Yeshua. Amen? So he says, Therefore, verse 13, Take up the whole armor of powers that we may be able to withstand in the dysfunctional day, in the day of dysfunction. Right? Any day evil comes towards you, you will be able to recognize the veiled plotting, right? and the methods of the devil, and you will be able to stand against it, right? So he says, verse 14, and having done all to stand at the end of 13, and verse 14, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the functional news, the gospel of peace, shalom, right? Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of powers, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Is that not what we taught on earlier uploads about tongues? Leshon in the Hebrew, glasalia in the Greek. Praying in the Spirit, building yourself up on your most prepared faith. So he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication entreating Yahweh for all the saints, the prepared ones. Amen? So let me just go through it quickly about what it means to put on the whole armor of powers, right? So that we can stand every day that evil encroaches upon us. Lies, deceits, or dysfunctional plottings to do harm, right? Which this present pandemic, scamdemic, is perpetrating against <laughs> the innocent, the poor and needy, the orphan and widow, and Yahweh's people. Father, forgive us in Yeshua's name. And let this word be accompanied by your spirit to birth courage in the body of the Messiah. In Yeshua's name. Okay. So he says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. All that is, is we always speak truth. You know, conviction comes from the gut. That's why he says the waist area. That's the deepest part. <laughs> you follow me? From the, oh man, that's from deep. You know, when you, you can tell a, 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 a person that's singing from their gut, huh? And it's, it gives you goosebumps, you know? And so that's where we used to speak truth at all times. Having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The word righteousness is an English translation. It's abstract. The Hebrew word is tzaddik. The verb function is to right wrongs, to make corrections, to satisfy objective justice. Everybody sees wrong is going on, and so we, who are the light of the world, are supposed to confront wickedness and put it down to protect the innocent, the poor and needy, and the orphan and widow. So we're, we put on the breastplate of righteousness, right? So that, that is that we speak truth constantly. And in speaking truth, it exposes wrongdoings, and then we make the corrections. We right the wrongs against the innocent, the poor and needy, the orphan and widow. Amen? Verse 15, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the functional news of peace, of shalom. Right? The scripture says the poor have the functional news of the kingdom of powers preached to them. Right? So everywhere we go, we are ready. That's why it says preparation. We are ready to herald or speak about the kingdom of powers, which is 
present. Why? Because it is in me. So wherever I am, Yahweh, I'm a yielded vessel so of Yahweh's revealing presence. So he can establish as it is in the heavens, so here on the earth. Through me, through you, and through all the body of the Messiah, wherever they are on the face of the earth. Right? The functional news of peace. What? What is that functional news? Hey, Yeshua HaMashiach died for your sins. You don't have to be burdened down with guilt anymore. It's covered under the blood, but you have to acknowledge him as doing so and have a willingness to turn away from that sinful nature that has you rebelling against the principles and the commandments of Yahweh. You will not know what those are if you're not in the Word, in the Torah, in his instructions and teachings. Amen? Verse 16, above all, above all these, which I previously said to you, taking the shield of faith, you know, the shield with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Satan is constantly trying to find openings. The devil goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whose guards are down. And he's throwing fiery darts in there to try and test, to find out if there's an opening or not. And so... Without faith, it is impossible to please powers, to please Yahweh. What is faith? It's emuna. The verb function of faith, emuna, is the physical example, is a, a newborn babe suckling on his mother's breast, right? Being nourished constantly so that they may grow. You can't stop that child from growing as long as that child is suckling on his mother's breast. Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. So... The dependency that that child has, that child is born, has a desire for something that they don't understand, but is satisfied when the mother breastfeeds. And that child just enjoys. You follow me? So the child is being nourished constantly. So the child is dependent upon the mother's breastfeeding, the, the milk. Yeah? So that, that's an example of faith. The child is totally dependent upon what it doesn't understand, <laughs> but grows as it continues to be nourished by what it depends upon. And that's the breast milk from mom. Okay? And so we too are to trust and believe and feed on the word, which is like the breast milk of a newborn babe, like 1 Peter 2, 1 says, desire the pure milk of the word as newborn babes that you may grow into salvation. They didn't even translate that. By the way, praise Yahweh, I'm doing, I'm translating New Covenant back into the Hebraic perspective like I did the Torah. So, and correcting this, these mistranslations. As newborn babes, this is First uh, Peter 2, 1 and 2 says, therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, and all dysfunctional evil speaking as newborn babes is the model of, of faith emuna as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow into salvation they didn't bring that part over so that's they they took away from in this verse right and the hebrew says without the pure milk without admixture fitting zephaniah 3 9 you know i will restore to them a pure lip, a purged word without admixture, which is the Hebrew language, the classical Hebrew language, not the modern. Amen? So, taking on the shield of faith by which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation is simply keep your mind stayed on things above, seated at the right hand with the Messiah and not on the earth. Isaiah 26, perfect peace have those who love your Torah, your instructions. So all that is, that I know that I've been granted the essence of existence, right? And I have a responsibility with that essence of existence to be a light to the world. So I don't think on things on the earth, but things that are above, seated at the right hand where the Messiah is. And I'm seated with him. Uh, Luke says, judging the 12 tribes, making sure the body is healthy and whole so we can function as one. Amen. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of powers. That's simple. The sword of the spirit, the sword, that's our offensive weapon. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of powers. The spirit brings back to our remembrance what the word says. 
We speak it into any situation and it brings order, harmony, peace, joy, healing, life, and the magnifying of the name of Yahweh Elohim in Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. And then verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all of the saints. The saints, the prepared ones, the devoters of meeting needs, the children of the Most High, our brethren are the most excellent ones who we look out for and are obligated to protect and to share and to serve above all others. Amen. And when people see us love one another, they will know that Yahweh reigns and they will come and seek to know Him as we do. Yeah? So, Tanakh wisdom, Shabbat Shalom, let's be the light of the world and keep on the whole armor of power, being diligent in representing His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven as faithful citizens. Amen? In Yeshua's name, Shalom.